Today on Let's Celebrate TV, I'll be answering the top five questions that you've sent in through Facebook and YouTube. Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of Let's Celebrate TV. I'm your host, Peter Lee. On this channel, we teach you all about celebrating. We share recipes for food, hors d'oeuvres, cocktails, and we share entertaining tips. Now we try and keep it all very simple, especially for those of you out there who say that you just can't cook or entertain, because we know that you really can. So if you like this episode, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and get a new episode every single week. Today's celebration is all about frequently asked questions. I always ask all of you at the end of every episode to send me in questions and comments, and you have. So today we've gathered five of the most frequently asked questions, and we're gonna read them and answer them for you today. So here we go, let's get started. Cindy writes, I can never seem to get the timing right at my parties. One thing is cooked before another, and it's all cold by the time we sit down to eat. Not only that, but when I plan dinner for six, we somehow don't eat until 10. What am I doing wrong? Wow, so Cindy, that's a great question, and I think it happens to a lot of people. Now, this is a pretty long answer, so I'm gonna read exactly what I wrote back to you in our little private messages back and forth. Try a reverse time scheduled based on when you want to have the food on the table. So first, you want to plan your menu ahead of time. Study your recipes and pay attention to how long the things take to cook, right? Then you're going to work backwards. Now you want to check the specific recipes, but generally, dense meats like roasts and turkeys, big chickens, the general rule is about 20 minutes per pound. So if you want to serve dinner at 7 o'clock, you're going to need 15 minutes to make up your plates, so which takes you back to 6.45. Your protein, your main course, is going to be 15 to 20 minutes rest time. So that takes you back to about 6.30. That's when it comes out of the oven and it rests. So if you have a 3-pound pork tenderloin at 20 minutes a pound, that's going to be 60 minutes. So you want to put that, that takes you back to 5.30. Now your protein is gonna to wanna to be at room temperature before you even get it ready to cook. That's another half an hour, which takes you back to five o'clock. So you see the pattern here? You wanna work backwards. Now, when you're making your checklist, you wanna also include what time you need to turn on your ovens, what time you take things out of the fridge, but you can use this logic and do that. And it's very simple and it will get you on a schedule and get your meals on the table perfectly every single time. Another little tip is, while your roasts and meats and things are resting, that's when you can make that last minute sauce, you can toss the salad, you can reheat one of your side dishes, and then you'll be good to go every single time. Question number two is from Rich. Rich says, I love to entertain, but so many of my friends have food allergies. How do you know what to make for people? Rich, that's a great question, because there are a lot of people with food issues today. Maybe they have a special dietary need from an allergy or whatever. So what I like to do is when I make my menu up, I send it out to all of my guests, and that way they can let me know if something needs to change. I'd much rather change my menu ahead of time than have people show up and then can't eat the meal I prepared for them. Question number three from Joe C. Joe writes, we entertain often, and I have a collection of cookbooks, but still I'm running out of ideas. Where do you get your inspiration? Well, Joe, you know, like you, I have a large library of cookbooks and recipes, but you know, even I need some help sometimes. So in fact, you know, we did an episode in season two all about where you get your inspiration from. You can watch it here. But one thing that I like to do I save all of my menus and all of my guest lists. 
And whenever I'm planning a new event, I'll refer back to that database and I'll go through and sometimes I'll repeat a recipe or a, a menu rather that, that worked really well. Or I'll take a component from that menu and this menu and I'll create a whole new experience. The other bonus of that is you remember what you've served people. Now, I recently discovered that the last six times our friends Gene and Sharon came to dinner, I served them pork roast. So I'm inviting them over in a couple weeks and I'm not going to serve them pork roast. So that's a great tip for you. Save those menus and guest lists. Question number four from Richard. Someone different. Richard writes in, I've been to your house for dinner and I've been to your parties. You make it seem so easy. I just can't do it. What's your secret? Hmm, I know a couple of Richards, so I wonder which one this is. But anyway, the answer to that is, the secret is practice. You know, when I threw my very first dinner party, I was all by myself. I was up the night before cleaning and scrubbing and cooking till about 2 a.m. Now, my guests had a great time, but I was exhausted, so I didn't have a very good time. These days, I have a plan, which we talked about. I write out my recipes and my schedule, and I have it all down to a science. So that makes the workload on me a lot easier. You know, the real secret is that you just don't sweat the small stuff. Recently, we had some folks in for dinner, and I put some broccoli in the oven to roast. Then I got distracted, and guess what? I burned the broccoli. But my guests never knew. I happened to have some frozen peas in the freezer, I cooked them, I freshened them up with some fresh mint, and no one was the wiser. Because at the end of the day, it's about spending time with your friends and loved ones. You can have pizza and beer and still have a great time. So if something goes wrong or you're stressed, don't be stressed. Let it go, laugh it off, have another cocktail, and have a good time. Question number five. Drew writes, what does season to taste mean? Drew, this is probably my favorite question. Now, season to taste usually means salt and pepper, especially the salt. Now, many recipes will call for an exact amount of salt. I find that that really holds more for baking than in savory cooking. Now, when you're baking and you're following the recipe and it says add a half a teaspoon of salt, then do it and don't ask any questions. And that's because baking is a science and you need that to follow that exactly, those exact measurements. But in savory cooking, you have some flexibility. Now, most really good cooks will season the as they go. You want to season each layer. Savory cooking is all about creating those layers of flavor. So as you add an ingredient, you might need to add a little more salt. And taste as you go. Right at the end, you always want to taste all your recipes for seasoning because those last few minutes cooking, you may need to add a little more pepper or a little salt. Or right before the end, you need to throw in those fresh herbs to give it that brightness. So that's what season to taste means. So those are our five top questions. So keep writing us in. We love to hear you, hear from you on Facebook and YouTube. Now I'm going to put all of these questions and answers up in the comment section on YouTube so you can see them for real. And follow us on Facebook and keep writing us in. And then we'll do one of these question and answer sessions every so often, maybe every few weeks. And that's our episode for today. Now, thank you for joining us. We will see you again next Tuesday at 7 p.m. when you come on over and let's celebrate. Cheers.